the great goal to create a safe place for all athletes to compete and feel welcomed. In Manitoba, the anti-racism in a sport accord lunch contains the many commitments that organizations have promised to take in order to achieve an anti-racist environment for athletes. This is Zuhair. Welcome to Civic Platform. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today as we launch the Anti-Racism in Sport Call to Action Accord. My name is Wanda Gannett. <clears throat> I'm a retired Olympic volleyball player and I've been involved in sport all of my life. Often, the only or one of a few athletes of color. So this event plays close to my heart and experiences. Today's launch is being streamed live on Zoom and Facebook and will be recorded for our YouTube channel. We would like to inform those in need of closed captioning that we have options available to you if you need. The closed caption feature will be located on the bottom toolbar of your Zoom meeting. If you're joining us by Facebook Live, you can find it at the bottom of your video player. You will have the option to turn this feature on and off at your own discretion. Also, thank you in advance to Echo Interpreting for providing American Sign Language interpretation for today's launch. We are here in the Manitoba Sport Hall of Fame, and I would like to acknowledge that the land on which this event is taking place and where is the traditional territory of Anishinaabe, Cree, Ojibwe Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation and that our water is sourced from Shoal Lake 40, 41st Nation. As the anti-racism and sport campaign launches their accord today, the organizers and signatories are committed to taking time to understand reflect and edu educate themselves on the ongoing harms of colonization and its impact on access and inclusion in sport, while ensuring each of us listen and amplify the vo voices of First Nations, Métis Nation, and Inuit athletes through the, the, through the Accord and beyond. To ensure that the next hour honors our hopes desires, and collective wishes for the accord, we've asked knowledge keeper Clayton, Stan Clayton Sandy to bring opening remarks. Clayton Sandy is a band member of the Sioux Valley Dakota First Nation. His father was in the service, and he and his siblings were the only indigenous family that lived on the army base north of Brandon at Rivers, Manitoba. He had spent most of his career with the Manitoba government, helping indigenous youth and children feel like they belonged in school, community, summer job, or even on the playground, and to be included into the workforce. He has witnessed smart indigenous youth spiral in school and eventually drop out, drop out from being excluded by others at school. We are pleased to have Clayton here with us this morning, especially as he's been an instrumental partner on the anti-racism and sport campaign. Clayton. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be here this morning. I, I started this journey last year with these two young ladies that are quite vocal here. And uh, they've done such a remarkable job on this, on this project of uh, anti-racism in sports. And just, you know, I've always felt that, you know, it's, it's always the bottom line is education, you know, to try to get uh, our information into the heads of young people and to maybe change society the way that, uh, that they look at uh, people from different nations or different, different communities or different countries. I, uh, I spent 40 years with the Manitoba government. I always say I did, uh, I feel I spent 40 years doing Indian 101 in government and uh, I don't know if they got to Indian 102 yet. I'm always, always wonder about that. But I'm really glad to be here and I, uh, I have a granddaughter that's actually, she's in Vancouver right now. She's trying out for a provincial team out there. And uh, it's nice to see that uh, young people are actually getting into places like that and being able to go out and to uh, try, their, try their hand at different sports and be recognized. So I'm really happy to be here. 
it's an honor to you know to to have walked with uh, these young girls and I mean these ladies here to uh, you know to kick off this initiative and I think that we can you know we get uh, people like yourselves to you know come here and sign and to actually take some action and that's part of the truth and reconciliation I call it uh, a rec uh, reconciliation action so I'm hoping that people can actually take some action to actually get involved and get engaged and don't be afraid of us come out and talk to us, uh, you know, join us or do something with us. Because to me, that's where it starts, basic, basically, you know, putting your guard down and, uh, and helping us out in, in, in different ways. Because we have so many generations that, that, you know, we want just to fit in. And, uh, and sometimes they don't fit in. So thank you for being here. Thank you for the tobacco. And thank you for allowing me to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Clayton. This past year, the anti-racism and sport campaign team worked with a variety of Winnipeg athletes and sport stakeholders, including myself, to share experiences of racism and recommendations for how to take anti-racism actions in sport. We want, to kick, we want to kick off today's launch with their voices. Sports is everything to me. I was one of the fastest player in the league. Any sport you put me in, I could do it. And I never, ever understood why I never won Athlete of the Year. When I did my basketball practice, I was the only black person at that time. And it was really hard to actually fit in. We were playing against a team. There were some fans behind the goal screaming out my name and another player on my team who was also black. That's when they started using the N-word uh, to get our attention. And we're playing soccer, and then one of the assistant coaches says, well, this is probably one of the best pitch you have in Africa, so you shouldn't be the one complaining. Cops are being brought into this, like grown adults are about to fight, you know what I mean? It's like, this is a high school game. How did this escalate so much? I, I didn't even know who to go to. So I remember walking off the field. It was 90th minute, I was tearing up, just crying, because I couldn't express to myself. I know that silent racism exists, and I think this happens in, in, in all walks of life. I've seen parents, myself, talk poorly of other kids or other cultures or other ethnicities playing certain sports. I have been called, oh, look at that black girl in school, and I ignored it. They're like, I don't want to be your friend because you're from Syria. You feel angry, you feel betrayed, you feel hurt. You start asking yourself questions that can be answered while you're black. I showed my capabilities. My teammates didn't support indigenous people. The coaches also didn't support me as an indigenous person. So that was my drive to, like, to be perfect all the time. I was able to hold myself back, hold the team back, guys held themselves back and stuff like that. But there's so many cases in this world where we can't hold ourselves back. Don't just go through life with the shutters on, uh, living a privileged life saying, oh, this doesn't happen to me, so it doesn't exist. It does exist. I'm telling you as a professional athlete of 10 years and a proud Winnipegger and of a Pakistani Canadian Muslim descent that it does happen. Keep an eye out for it and put an end to it. Uh, the parents should just teach their kids about racism, teach them that it's bad. If your mouth's not gonna say something good, just keep it shut, respectfully. I feel like to educate somebody so they could understand where you're coming from, is to share lived experiences. This teammate, she's, she's white, she's like, I've learned so much from my kids about, you know, racism, and I never, ever, ever thought that I had to walk into a gym and be perfect. And now I realize that you always thought that. My kid was actually being teased for his hair, and another one of his friends on the team saw it, and that friend stood up for him. And then not only did that friend stand up for him, another friend stood up for him, and the other kid ended up apologizing. So the kids themselves have the power to make that change. We have to instill that strength and power within these kids to do that. To take action. If you're aware and you know about this, don't be silent. Both of you have a heart then both of you are humans. There's no difference between you two. We need to educate a lot of people. We need more coaches of color. We need to change the game. For today's event, we will start with Ruben Garang, Director of Immigration Partnership Winnipeg, will bring greetings on behalf of Immigration Partnership Winnipeg. Following this, Jessica Prasnik and Daria Hokera Palmer 
will provide details in the anti-racism in sport campaign and the accord. We are also very happy to have most of our signatories here today with us to sign on to the accord. We will begin the accord signing ceremony by hearing from some of our signatories on why their organization is signing on to the accord and their hopes for the future. We will end by answering questions. So, if you are attending on Zoom and have questions, please submit them in the Q&A section and members of the Anti-Racism in Sport campaign will answer them at the end of our launch. Finally, we are running a draw for those attending the launch today to win one of three pairs of tickets to the home opener Valor FC game on May 1st. To enter the draw, click on the link in the Q&A box and enter your name by 1040, and we will announce the winner at the end of the event. Thank you to Valor FC for donating the tickets. Now I welcome Ruben Garang, the Director of, Director of Immigration Partnership Winnipeg, to bring greetings. Good morning. <clears throat> Jessica uh, told us to speak loud, so <laughs> I try my best. Um, I am Ruben Garang, the Director of Immigration Partnership Winnipeg. Immigration Partnership Winnipeg is a multi-sectoral collective that established a new form of collaboration at community level to newcomer settlement and integration. Our vision is to make Winnipeg a welcoming and inclusive multicultural city where everyone finds the support and opportunities to realize the best potentials. We engage stakeholders to identify priority areas and collectively address them. We are hosted by Social Planning Council of Winnipeg and in turn we host anti-racism in a sport campaign which is doing an amazing job part of which we are here today. The signing of the accord today is important for people who have interest in sport, but often experience racism and discrimination in, on, in, in a, on a playground. The sport is a cultural thing. When I was young, I used to play sport. And the reason of playing is that uh, you want to have fun, primarily. There are many other good reasons for doing that. But you will not enjoy if you are not welcome and respected on a playing ground. And this is what this accord is to accomplish, it's to provide us with opportunity for learning, to make improvement, make sure that sport is accessible and free to all people that experience discrimination and racism. And it can be done, right? All of us are here today with open arts. It can be done, it can be achieved. Lastly, allow me to say thank you to Canadian Heritage for funding, for, for funding the first phase of the anti-racism in sport. Food Beverage and Manitoba for sponsoring our launch, our launch of Access and Inclusion Conference held earlier this year, and our campaign partners. Without their support and expertise, we would not make this campaign and the accord possible. I would like to say thank you so much for taking time to join us today. Thank you so much, Ruben, uh, for talking about IPW and the importance of this campaign. So good morning, everyone. My name is Jessica Prasnick. I'm one of the project managers at Immigration Partnership Winnipeg, and I get to work with Ruben, and I have had the privilege to work on the anti-racism sport campaign with the amazing team and the amazing partners. So Winnipeg's anti-racism and sport campaign has been a citywide anti-racism initiative that was launched one year ago today in this very room. It's really wild to think about what uh, we've achieved over the past year. So the campaign has sought to address, disrupt, and eliminate racism in sport experienced by First Nations, Métis Nation, Inuit, Black, racialized, and religious minority communities in Winnipeg. 
We've been guided by an awesome advisory committee made up of over 30 sport and community stakeholders that have guided um, us on our activities and provided us with a, quite a bit of uh, support in developing, implementing our activities. So we've taken a multi-faceted approach to this campaign, and it's included five different activities. Our first has been a research project that we conducted in partnership with the, Man the University of Manitoba's Faculty of Kinesiology and Recreation Management and the Faculty of Arts. The research project included a literature review, an environmental scan, and we held focus groups. And from this research, it clearly showed that re racism is prevalent in all aspects of sport, from the interpersonal level to the systemic. Our research captured many of these experiences of racism and we put forward recommendations for moving forward. We've used the research to develop and guide our other activities. So the second activity were, was and is middle school presentations where we take a local pro athlete. So we have awesome uh, Blue Bomber alumni, we have Valor FC players, Gold Eye players, and we partnered them up with a community sport leader to go into schools and co present on the different types of racisms, how that is experienced in sport, some anti-racism actions that have taken place in sport, and what to do if you experience or witness racism. And we've developed this presentation in partnership with the Manitoba Association of Rights for Rights and Liberties. And to date, over 2,700 students across the city and some places in the province have received that training. So we're really pumped about that. So our third activity is that we've held a public awareness campaign. We've used social media, print ads, uh, infographics, posters, uh, advertisements, and even the video that you watched earlier today to teach Winnipeggers about the presence of racism and discrimination in sport and equip them to identify, disrupt, and respond to racism and discrimination. We also showcase and celebrate the amazing achievements of First Nations, Métis Nation, Inuit, Black, racialized, and religious minority athletes despite the racism and barriers they face to participating in sport. And the fourth activity is our training called Sport is Not an Equal Playing Field, an introduction to anti-racism, literacy, and action. This three-hour interactive session, which is free, by the way, um, is designed for all sports stakeholders to provide them with an three kind of three components, an introductory understanding of anti-racism literacy. And so from our research, we really found that there was a big need for us to have a common lang like language and dialogue around this, a common understanding of racism and anti-racism. The second in the training, we provide an understanding of the current state of racism and sport in Winnipeg. And then we provide some skills and tools on how to be an active anti-racist in sport. All training participants receive a work a workbook that is geared to enhancing their engagement with the training material. And for those of you in the room and online who are interested in taking the training, please just go to our website and we have a form for you to sign up. You can sign up on behalf of your organization and bring folks from your organization or as an individual and join one of our group sessions. And so before I pass it over to my awesome colleague, Daria, who will explain our fifth and final activity, the Accord, which is why we're all here today, I just want to add a final note um, and as I myself and we all reflect on the one year of this campaign, I just want to say a personal thank you to the hard work and dedication of our campaign team members. Alan Makowicz, Golocha Boru, Craig Brown, and the ama amazing Daria Yokero Palmer. I feel honored and privileged every day to work with all of you. Not only have you brought your hard work, expertise, and the passion to this campaign, you have taught me so much every day. This cam campaign could not have been made the foundational strides towards creating a more inclusive sport community without each and every one of you. With that, I will pass it over to Daria, who's the project consultant for our anti-racism and sport campaign and has led the charge in designing, developing the Accord over the past year. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Good morning. My name is Daria Hercara Palmer and I'm the project consultant for the anti-racism in sport campaign. My main focus on the campaign has been working with stakeholders on the creation of the Anti-Racism Sport Call to Action Accord, for which we are all here today. The Accord was developed from findings of the Exploring Experiences of Racism and Anti-Racism in Sport in Winnipeg Research Project, and with the advisement of the Anti-Racism in Sport Campaign Accord Working Group and the Advisory Committee. From this, objectives of the Accord were created, and they include tangibly addressing racism as a sport community, 
identifying and removing barriers and policies that promote and sustain the exclusion of First Nations, Métis Nation, Inuit, Black, racialized, and religious minority communities. Assist in making anti-racism education and training mandatory for sport organizations in Winnipeg and their stakeholders. And increasing awareness, creating an inclusive space, encouraging accountability, and increasing diversity and representation at all levels of sport. Anti-racism is the active process of identifying and eliminating racism by changing systems, organizational structures, policies, practices, and attitudes so that power is redistributed and shared equitably. Organizations working towards becoming anti-racist are encouraged to sign onto the accord and be accountable for its implementation by setting goals for themselves and reporting their progress annually. To assist organizations to accomplish their goals, we have developed tools, resources, and training for participating organizations. These include an anti-racism and sport policy template, which provides organizations with a template that would be helpful in creating their own anti-racism policy, whether choosing to create one from scratch or using the provided example as their own policy. Organizational audit guidelines, which uses an internationally recognized equity, diversity, and inclusion, or EDI, assessment tool that gives organizations a guideline for conducting a thorough audit under the guidance of an experienced EDI professional. Collecting race-based data guidelines, which will provide organizations with steps and a rationale for collecting sensitive demographic data from and in conjunction with underrepresented populations. Our literature review and focus group research report that was conducted to inform the anti-racism sport activities and the development of the accord. The research involved online focus groups that provided insights via lived experiences as members of the Winnipeg sport community and recommendations for the future. The anti-racism sport resources on our website also provide videos, articles, and other materials that can be used to learn more about anti-racism. We also offer middle school presentations, an introductory to anti-racism literacy and action training, and an anti-racism and sport training for sport decision makers that my colleague Jessica previously spoke to. As for the accord itself, these are commitments that will help assess, acknowledge, and intentionally address racism within sport organizations. They are basic actions that require goals to guide organizations to becoming anti-racist organizations. Seeking to continue to grow is a value that should be embedded into organizations while working towards their anti-racism goals. This will contribute to ensuring that Winnipeg sport is a safe place for all. The first commitment of the Accord is for education and training whereby organizations are dedicated to continual learning about racism and anti-racism through yearly workshops provided for all levels, included coaches, referees, participants, board members, and staff, and to support and empower officials to address racist behavior from players, fans, coaches, and other officials. The second commitment is for accountability, whereby organizations will enforce, embed, and uphold a zero-tolerance anti-racism policy, as well as a statement and part of the vision of the organization. This includes to address every instance of racism, instill an internal reporting rec mechanism on racist incidences, and to record instances of racism within their organization. The third and final commitment is for awareness and action. For members of their organization to work together to create a safe and inclusive space for all First Nations, Métis Nation, Inuit, Black, racialized, and religious minority communities in Winnipeg. This can be done by collecting race-based data annually within their organization for participants, coaches, referees, board members, and staff, and to have more representation at all levels. Funding anti-racism programming and opportunities at all levels within their organization can help them be an anti-racist leader and advocate within the sports system for change. Also, the overall recommendation of the accord is for signatories to encourage the creation and use of an independent third-party reporting mechanism to collect data on incidences of racism and advocate for appropriate, measurable, and timely addressing of issues. Currently, incidences of racism are reported directly back to the sport body, where there is no arm's length approach and can cause conflicts of interest. We're hoping to work with sports stakeholders this year to develop an independent third party mecha mechanism and hope to release it in the coming future. As I'm sure many are wondering, what happens after organizations sign on to the accord? Organizations will be expected to develop goals to help them reach their anti-racism and sport accord commitments. Goal setting is an important part of this initiative as it involves intentional development 
and an action plan designed to motivate and guide organizations towards the goal of becoming anti-racist. Fully understanding that many organizations have limited capacity, this may take a few years to accomplish. Every year, each partner will report on their goals to the anti-racism sport campaign and create new goals for themselves for the following year. This way, organizations are accountable to themselves, their membership, and their community. The project consultants on the anti-racism sport campaign will be there throughout the year to support the signatories achieve their goals and by ways of offering training, resources, tools, and consultations for free as long as the campaign is funded. Thank you. As we begin the inaugural signing of the Anti-Racism in Sport Call to Action Accord, we have invited a few organizations to speak on the importance of the accord and their hopes for the future as they sign the accord, as they sign the accord starting with Sport Manitoba. Thank you, Wanda. <clears throat> My name is Pat Kirby. I'm the Director of Sport with Sport Manitoba. Uh, on behalf of our President and CEO, Janet McMahon, who's uh, away on vacation and out of the province, it's my pleasure to be here today. Sport Manitoba advocates for the positive benefits of participating in sport and ultimately being active for life. And we believe all Manitobans should have the opportunity to participate in a sport environment that is inclusive and welcoming to all. As a partner of the anti-racism in sport campaign, we knew that we could count on the strength of over 70 provincial sport organizations and other key sport partners who deliver sport programs across the province to help raise awareness and uh, participate in the campaign's key initiatives, important research, school presentations, and stakeholder training. It's our shared interest to create a more inclusive and welcoming sport community, and we've participated in this campaign every step of the way. From having some of our own staff on the campaign's volunteer committees, to connecting sport partners to key research and training opportunities, to have our own staff take the training. We are proud to have partnered with this campaign since its inception. Sport Manitoba believes that anti-racism takes action. And as a partner and a signatory of the Anti-Racism in Sport Accord, we commit to setting goals that will guide us to become an anti-racism organization, like continuing to learn about anti-racism practices, empowering our sport community to address racist behaviors, working with our sport partners to adopt a zero-tolerance anti-racism policy, being an anti-racism leader and advocate within the sport system for change. In all, so we, we can strengthen our sport community by becoming more inclusive and welcoming to all. Thank you, and I'll sign the cord now. Hello, Tanche. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Kadane Chupaske. I'm a proud member of Métis Nation and a, a midshift man from here in Winnipeg. Uh, I, I work for Manitoba Aboriginal uh, Sport and Recreation Association, MASRC. It uh, doesn't really matter what I do, but sadly, we're here to uh, recognize that over the past year even, there have been public incidents of racism and discrimination in sport at the highest level. So. We know sport is not an equal playing field, and being part of this campaign has been very important to us as an Indigenous organization uh, su to support in our Indigenous population across the province and here in the city. So uh, it's been great to partner with organizations from and, and meet great people from different backgrounds and, and various backgrounds with cult different cultural experience, different sport experience. It's uh, bringing everybody together here today. Our, our hope today uh, as we gather here is to, uh, through the Accord, is to create that welcoming and safe space uh, mentioned. And by educating, supporting, and holding each other accountable through this action, through this Accord in, in sport, and at all levels of sport with all stakeholders. Uh, racism affects 
holistically. Uh, and as Indigenous people, we, we like to have a holistic approach in, to everything in, in, in sport, not just physically, but the racism discrimination that we face also affects us mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So the, the outcome of this is, is to, again, at all levels, um, help us promote that healthy and, and well, uh, good lifestyle uh, holistically. Thank you. I will sign. Good morning. My name is Jennifer Sarn. I'm the manager of recreation services for the city of Winnipeg. And I'm here today on behalf of the community services department and on behalf of our director, Cindy Fernandez, who's unable to join us today. Within the very foundation of our public service delivery model, we strive to work in collaboration with community to create equitable access to community services in each of our divisions, library services, recreation services, community development, and community bylaw enforcement services. Our department supports the anti-racism and sport campaign as we also value the importance of education and awareness of inclusion, respect and diversity through the fundamentals of play, recreation and sport, and by investing in our community leaders in training and development. On behalf of the Community Services Department of the City of Winnipeg, we share our intentions today to further the anti-racism and sport accord by aligning our municipal community services to the three, three accord commitments of education and training, accountability, and awareness and action. The accord aligns with several of the city's initiatives, such as our Winnipeg, the Poverty Reduction Strategy, Newcomer Welcome and Inclusion Policy, Winnipeg Recreation Strategy, the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Policy, our Journey to Reconciliation, and the City of Winnipeg Indigenous Accord. Further to this, our department has initiated projects such as creating a more welcoming and inclusive leisure guide, the launch of children's anti-racism activity cards in our play programs, featuring a coloring contest winner on the priceless fun guide that illustrates a Winnipeg without racism, investing in diversity training, including the anti-racism and sport training to over 500 employees delivering services throughout the community, and working to reduce barriers to employment and welcoming Indigenous and newcomer youth in our summer program recruitment efforts. Building recreation programs, community services, and strong leaders for tomorrow is an ongoing commitment of the Community Services Department and one part of our collective efforts to create safe and inclusive play spaces for everyone. The Community Services Department of the City of Winnipeg is proud to sign the Anti-Racism and Sport Accord and to continue our work and, so many, and work with so many wonderful organizations here today to eliminating racism in sport as we strongly believe that recreation and sport is for everyone. Thank you. Thanks everybody for being here. My name is Hector Regueta. Oh, this is a, a lot of work in the making, many years of hard work, of listening, uh, and to a certain extent of suffering. I wanna start by apologizing to the youth, the families, and individuals that had to experience uh, racist incidents. Um, this moment is too late for them and I apologize. That said, today we're all here because we wanna commit, because we wanna put the effort, because we wanna be thoughtful, we wanna be kind, we wanna be polite to each other. We're here because we wanna do better. We're here because we wanna make change. I'm encouraged by all the groups, the faces, the partners, the individuals, each and every one that is here. 
because I know that together we will get there. Today, we start the work. Today, we commit to change. I'm happy to be here, to be part of this great event, to sign my commitment, but also to start working with each of you and hold you accountable the way you're gonna hold me accountable to make this a better city for everybody. Thank you. Hello, my name is Andrew Collier. I'm the general manager of the Winnipeg Gold Eyes. The Winnipeg Gold Eyes are committed to making sport safe and inclusive for all. The Gold Eyes have been a part of the Anti-Racism and Sport Campaign Advisory Committee for more than a year, and we are dedicated to learning and growing as an organization. Our organization is a diverse family that includes players, office staff, and hundreds of seasonal workers who all helped to make Gold Eyes baseball games a fantastic experience for all. Together with our fans and sponsors, we are proud to celebrate diversity, human rights, and the spirit of inclusiveness every game, every season. As part of our commitment to anti-racism in sport, we are hosting, hosting Gold Eyes Diversity Day in June to celebrate diversity in Manitoba. Diversity Day features will include recognizing the 75th anniversary of Jackie Robinson, breaking of the color barrier in baseball, and pay tribute to the man who became Major League Baseball's first African-American player in 1947. Also, Gold Eyes players will participate in video clips promoting the You Can Play project, dedicated to ensuring equality, respect, and safety for all athletes. You Can Play challenges the culture of locker rooms and spectator areas by focusing only on an athlete's skills, work ethic, and competitive spirit. We plan to donate funds from every ticket sold to Diversity Day to the Rainbow Resource Center. As well, we will be highlighting the anti-racism and sport campaign during the game. We hope each year that our commitments toward anti-racism will help support and create a safe sport community for all in Winnipeg. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Laura Maisman, and I am the executive director for the General Council of Winnipeg Community Centers, uh, as otherwise known as GCWCC. The General Council provides leadership in areas of governance, capital investments, operations, programming support for 63 City of Winnipeg Community Centers. Fun fact, the buildings the community centers are in are owned by the city of Winnipeg. However, each is governed and operated by a group of volunteers with community elected board of directors. These volunteers help to deliver leisure, recreation and sport programs for their communities throughout the city. Often it is a child's first experience with sport at community centers at the grassroots level. Our organization is committed to leading the discussion and working with our membership, our community centers, to help ensure that sport and leisure programs are safe and inclusive uh, spaces for all. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Kananoya and with me here today is Brooklyn Boyd. On behalf of Athletics Manitoba and our board of directors, we would like to sincerely thank Daria and the Anti-Racism Sport Campaign 
for including us in this event. Brooklyn and I are extremely honored to be here. We recognize the importance of this accord and formalizing our commitment to this work. It is really great to see all these organizations come together and commit to make a change in sport throughout Winnipeg. Over the last year and a half, we have committed to creating new athletics opportunities. Our goal is to start building new systems that are inclusive and equitable. We know this is a long-term process, and we are grateful for the support that this accord will provide. Part of this process for us was rethinking how we have operated in the past. Starting something new doesn't take away from the value of what we previously offered members, but acknowledges that it has not worked for everyone. We want to make sure our sport offers safe and inclusive spaces for all First Nations, Métis Nations, Inuit, Black, racialized, and religious minority communities in Winnipeg. We believe that successful programs which properly address past challenges and current barriers can only be built through development of long-term, ongoing partnerships in trust and understanding. We were so lucky to work with Daria and the anti-racism campaign directly for the first annual Indigenous Women and Girls 5K run last September. This event led us to, weekly, to creating a weekly running program at Children of the Earth School. Getting to know the girls and working with them every week has been great. Earning their trust and letting them show me what they want to learn has helped me grow not only as a person, but as a coach. Understanding that there is no one-size-fits-all sport program really gave us the opportunity to literally build something from scratch together. We can't invite people to the table and then not actually address their interests. We are committed to change and we're going to remove the barriers that have historically excluded groups from our community. On behalf of Athletics Manitoba, we sign this accord and commit to intentionally addressing anti-racism issues within our organization. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Schwendeman and I'm here today as a director of the Winnipeg Youth Soccer Association and a community soccer advocate. The Winnipeg Youth Soccer Association is honored to be a signatory onto the Anti-Racism in Sport Accord. The resources, supports and guidance being provided to organizations through this accord are so important and absolutely critical in helping sports organizations make real change. The anti-racism in sport team has already created huge positive momentum and awareness around racism in sport and what communities face, and now it's time to put that momentum into real action. I stand here signing onto this accord today on behalf of Weiss's board and staff because not all teams or players have been treated equally in soccer in Manitoba, and it's time for that to change. So much of this work is built on the backs of players, coaches, and parents who have faced aggression and pain in sport, and today we honor them by committing to this work for the long haul. Inclusive grassroots soccer programs are the future. They are our only way forward if we want to grow the game and engage healthy communities. So many programs like IRCOM, the Immigrant and Refugee Community Organization of Manitoba, and MASRC, who I am honored to stand beside today, have been removing barriers to soccer and sport for decades, IRCOM especially for over 10 years this year. There are so many champions in soccer programs that welcome all. There are leaders that we can all look to and learn from in this space, and WISA will continue to bring this awareness and education to as many soccer providers and partners as possible. WISA is not only committed to this work, but we are so grateful that resources like the Anti-Racism in Sport campaign are here to help us along this path. It's not easy, it will take continuous learning and listening, but we are here for it. There's no room for racism in soccer, an international sport that should be accessible to all and used as a social justice healer for our youth. Thank you so much for everyone to everyone for making this happen. It really is a monumental day.
Thank you, speakers. We will now invite the rest of the signatories to sign the accord. Baseball, Manitoba. Basketball, Manitoba. Canadian Sports Centre of Manitoba. Ethnocultural Council of Manitoba. Fencing, Manitoba. Football, Manitoba. <laughs> Immigrant and Refugee Community Organization of Manitoba. Immigration Partnership, Winnipeg. Kurdish Initiative for Refugees could not be in attendance. Manitoba Association of Newcomer Serving Organizations. Manitoba High School Athletic Association. Manitoba Wheelchair Sports Association. Physical and Health educate, Educators of Manitoba could not be in attendance. Returning to Spirit. Social Planning Council of Winnipeg could not be in attendance. Turtle Island Project exercise. Volleyball Manitoba. Winnipeg Aboriginal Sport Achievement Centre.
Winnipeg Newcomer Sport Academy. Women of Color Community Leadership Initiative. Thank you to all the signatories who are able to be here to sign today and solidify your commitment to anti-racism in sport to make Winnipeg a safe space for all. We have more organizations signing on in the coming weeks and we look forward to sharing that announcement soon. And thank you to everyone tuning in online to celebrate this momentous occasion with us here today. Last thing before we answer questions, we have drawn the names for the winners of the three pairs of Valor FC tickets. They are Peter T Tong, <laughs> Amber Reed, and Matthew Joseph. We will be in touch with you after the event. Thank you, to, thank you Valor FC for donating the tickets. This event would not have been possible without our partners. We would like to thank Scotty Durer, our ASL interpreter today from Echo Interpreting, Canadian Heritage for funding the first phase of our campaign, Food and Beverages, Beverage Association of Manitoba for sponsoring this event, as well as the Inclusion and Access to Sport Conference, Sport Manitoba for providing us with our venue today, the Manitoba Sports Hall of Fame. JP Media Works and Tech Modern for our live streaming and record recordings of today's event. Valor FC for providing the home opener tickets that we gave away in our draw. <clears throat> the Anti-Racism and Sport Advisory Committee and Accord Working Group who shaped the Accord and all the work of the campaign all year long, dedicating many hours each month, month to this important initiative. This would not be possible without your support. And last but not least, the signatories who signed on to the accord to ded dedicate their organizations to help create a truly anti-racist sport community. If your organization would like to sign on to the accord, please contact the Anti-Racism in Sport campaign at info at antiracisminsport.ca or visit the website for more information at www.antiracisminsport. This is everything for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it and gained new helpful information. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, like usual, please like, share, and subscribe to see our upcoming episodes.